Today we're talking top shits. Why do we use top sets? Well, ultimately a top set provides us an opportunity to perform within the session without any accumulated fatigue, which ultimately just means that we can perform at the best within one expression of strength. And we know for anything that, if you followed us for any moment of time here on the YouTube channel or on Instagram, you'll know some of the factors that can contribute to strength and strength expression. If we have an accumulation of fatigue from intra-session sets, it means that we're probably going to have a reduced ability to one, express strength from a technique standpoint and a consistency of technique, but then also it's probably gonna be a reduction in overall force generating capacity because we just can't activate as many motor neurons at once. So a top set allows us to perform at the, the highest peak without any accumulation of fatigue from prior efforts. Charlie has a quote here that we like to use when teaching people about the RPE based system. And today is not a discussion on RPE and whether or not RPE or percentages would be best for you in your situation. However, RPE does allow us to start to get an understanding of accumulating current session data and how that is going to influence uh, your subsequent decision-making with load selection. And one of our favorite quotes here, and Charlie pushes this heavily, is that current performance is the best indicator of current performance. And this is why we use a top set, is because the top set allows us to get the best quality data at the start of the session without accumulated fatigue and allows us to then make better, more informed decisions after that top set with load selection. And if you're using an RPE based strategy with your programming, it means that we can actually choose, hopefully, the most accurate load selections for the session at hand. That was actually really good. I definitely need to get better whiteboard markers and not leave them out here. I've got to go find a better thing. Look how good that black is. Now that we know why it's beneficial to use top sets within your training, how would that typically look and how are most programs built around top set training? Well, this would be probably one of the most common ways in which we would prescribe it here at Melbourne Strength Culture. We'll go through a couple different strategies as well, but typically you'll have a, a top set at an RPE based prescription. We have the example here being one set of one at a 7.5. Then your back offs will be some form of a percentage of the predicted daily max, which here in the example, we have a three by three at 80% of PDM. So predicted daily max. The way in which PDM or predicted daily max is calculated is actually quite a simple equation. You simply take the weight that you selected for your top set and then the RPE that coincided with that set. It doesn't really matter if it's an overshoot or an undershoot or if you were accurate with your RPE, uh, with your weight selection, sorry, because the way in which the predicted daily max is calculated is it actually takes all of the data and spits out your predicted daily max as a result of the data that you've provided within that weight selection. We use Mike Tashira's RPE chart uh, and we recommend you use that as well if you wanted to calculate your PDM. I actually have a pre-recorded video on this YouTube channel discussing how you can build a spreadsheet for predicted daily max in this exact situation, if that is of interest to you. I'll make sure Donny throws it in the description box below. Here's the thumbnail, zing. If, uh, hopefully that was in screen, but if you wanna check that out, it wasn't in screen. So this is the most common way in which we would prescribe top sets here at Melbourne Strength Culture. For the example, we would simply say, let's say we chose 100 kilograms here. Uh, the predicted daily max would spit something out like 112.5 kilograms, and we would take 80% of that for our three by three. Another very common way in which prescribing top sets may work for you is an actual load selected for your top set. So your coach may actually give you a predetermined load, judging by previous week's data most likely, or it would be a percentage of a pre-tested 1RM. It would work in exactly the same fashion here. You would take your one set of one at 100 kilos, you would perform that, you would see the performance, and then you would take your 80% of that for your three by three. The reason we don't like to prescribe in this fashion too often is because 
It doesn't really matter how you perform that top set, you're always going to be taking 80% of the predetermined load. If you're having a really good day in the gym and the waves are big and they're ready to be surfed, it means that you're probably going to have a lower intensity for your back off percentages there at 80%. And in contrast, if you did your top set at 100 kilos and it was the hardest single you've ever done in your life, a true RPE 10, again, we don't really have any way in which we can change the back off work based off that pre-data that has been a result from the top set. And as we discussed earlier, that is the whole point of undertaking top sets in training. It allows us an opportunity to collect in session or current performance data to then make better, more accurate decisions afterwards with your training and ensure that you're actually getting the right amount of stimulus within that session. The third strategy that you may have for an <coughs> But the third strategy that you may see with top sets for prescription strategies would be a completely RPE based strategy. And again, it's quite common. And once you've actually undertaken RPE training for any number of blocks or any number of time, any length of time, sorry, it actually becomes quite intuitive, this strategy for uh, prescribing and selecting loads. The top set here for this example would simply be at an eight, and then we'd have our back off uh, within an RPE range or within specific RPE points. Uh, in this example here, we have a three by three at a seven to eight RPE. And we know with this strategy, it's gonna be completely regulated within the session based on the current data as RPE based training allows you to do. Now that we see top sets and how they may be prescribed in a program, when would they be beneficial and when may they not be the best prescription for your training program? Well, first, when are they beneficial? Ultimately, we're using top sets as we discussed at the very start to try to accumulate some uninterrupted data without any fatigue within the session. It allows us to perform at the highest possible expression of strength within that session. And for that, top sets are really, really beneficial within a performance-based block or something like a peaking phase. Uh, it's highly specific to competition. It's highly specific to expressions of strength. So definitely in a strength block or a peaking block or something like that, a top set would be really, really beneficial for you. Where it may not actually be that beneficial would be something like a hypertrophy phase with a high total session volume or a high accumulation of volume throughout a training week. The reason being is that the individual session's performance or the individual set's performance probably isn't as important as it would be within a peaking phase. And this means that the accumulation of the stimulus throughout the session is probably what we're going to be dictating our performance as not so much the peak of one individual set. So in hypertrophy phases or high volume phases, it's probably best to dictate your performance metrics across an accumulation of sets, not just one set in particular. So for hypertrophy phases, we'd probably use a different strategy, not top sets. Not to say that you can't use them in those situations, they just probably are going to be better, uh, better strategies for you and your programming. We know that if you made it this far in the video, that you love us here, you love chili, you love chili bubbins. Um, we wanna say thank you for getting to this point in the video. We know 50% of you have probably dripped off and as Charlie said last video, get stuffed to those people. If you did make it this far, please just send us a like. It does help the channel grow. It helps the algorithm spit us out there. Um, and also we just wanna say, if you have any ideas for further content or anything you'd like us to cover, more programming strategies may be of interest to you. If they are, let us know specifically because we'd love to get the content out there and help you as best we can. But for now, happy lifting. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.